So finally we got this plant design and operation class. Now you've seen these little by little operations, momentum, well actually this is a heat transfer operation, this is a reactor, so it's a reactor engineering class, you've got bulbs which is momentum transfer, you got probably there eventually a flash unit or let's say this is a flash unit, uh, you got pipings and bulbs and pumps and this is a another flash, well separation tank. So now that you actually know how to model units and you know a little bit on automatization of these equipment and safety and how to install all these, it's time to, well, eventually design a plant and not only design it, know how to operate it and what are the operation conditions. So you can see you're going to learn a lot of these type of diagrams, which are the pipe and instrumentation diagram. Instrumentation meaning all these little guys that tell you if they are sensors or if they are actuators or if they are for if they are for levels, temperature, pressure and so on. So what do we actually see for studying this plant design and operation course is first things first understand the difference between diagrams. So far the typical diagrams we've seen before in black uh, in mass balance energy balances are block diagrams which are the typical ones that you say these guys come here and separate in three then eventually we go to pfd diagrams which are a little bit maybe technical i show this right here and it has a instead of just saying distillation goes in and goes out i'm going to add the feed i'm going to add the vapor liquid the condenser, the ratio, a little bit more of information, maybe even how many trays there are, type of trays, uh, general stuff you would like to know, but not everything. And finally you will see a pipe and instrumentation diagram, which is similar to this. You will have all the sensors and all the required data. You have your unit, you have your flow rates, you have everything of the block diagram, you have everything of the uh, process flow diagram and you got extra information especially for that of safety and that for automatization and control process control now we are going to understand how to size equipment how to set the unit of operations for such equipments we're going to see how to integrate those equipment so for instance you have this distillation for this process a b c d is right here you have AB and you have CD, maybe you need to show AB in a flash container, you get B and A pure, and this you bring it to this another process and you need to get back C because you can't take out C, I don't know, eventually you're going to make this current here C. So you're going to know why do we need a mixer here, why do we need to use a distillation column and then eventually a flash separator and plenty of interesting things regarding on how to use different operation units in the process right here. Now we see a lot of recycle porches and bypass. So recycle is this one right here. Purge is essentially, let's say this is smog or anything that we don't like. Let's say it's hydrogen, so that will be our uh, purge. We're going to bring it to a flare and we're going to burn the flare. It. And bypass is not that used, but many times we need to, let's say, help. So we need to dilute this product. So we take a little bit from the original feed and instead of actually treating it, we're going to bring it here in order to have the bypass. So we're going to have plenty of rules and simplifications and rule of thumbs for recycled purges and bypasses. Now we're going to talk about continuous processes and now we're going to analyze a little bit more on transient state processes but as usual continuous processes are the most important part of this course. For instance transient state processes we can start with startup of a plant so if we have a new plant we need to know how to start it up we need to fill these tanks we need to have the levels and then we need to use a condenser we need to achieve that reflex ratio we need to be able to operate a pump full of liquid not 
liquid and gas and so on. Now many times you also need to scale up so for example if you have this huge tank that can produce let's say it's a reactor can produce 100 tons but currently we are working at 50 percent so what do we need to, mm, to do in order to get to 100 percent what do we we need to change pumps or maybe we need to include two pumps par parallel in series all those questions are going to be of use and also scaling down scaling down sometimes is especially when you have excess inventory the vendors or sellers are not doing well they cannot sell it so eventually you cannot keep producing all day long so you will need to go down produce a little bit less and less and less and eventually let's say it's the case that the sellers uh, were the sales went down and down and down until eventually they have no sales well you will need to shut down that right here so how do you do that in a safe way without uh, expending that much money and safety hazards and all that now I love this part right here because plenty of this is done by heuristics golden rules or thumb rules for the process design and operation so let's say a very crazy one is the ratio between a tank a storage tank between its radius or diameter versus its length so instead of you actually going and checking for the material and knowing the stress of the material and you want to check this and that there's a rule that tells you okay this is the ratio between radius and height of a tank so that's awesome of course once again these are golden rules they don't mean that they are always right or it doesn't mean that you can always and we and that you should always do it but they help they are already uh, proven rules that may in general help you and yeah also energy integration analysis especially you're going to see heat exchanger networks and how to decrease uh, let's say utility use and how to increase our let's say efficiency so why do we need it well, of course, the first thing that pops up into your mind as a chemical engineer should be chemical plant. So that should be enough. But let me show you a little bit more. You want to integrate all your previous knowledge. If you have a knowledge in, let's say, a flash drum and you have a knowledge of pumps, but you cannot, you don't understand that you need one of them. Well, it, it has no meaning if you cannot interact between each other. Or maybe also a heater or you know that a compressor stage needs to be cooled down for the next compressor stage if you don't know how to interact between these two units well you're lost and this is what you're going to see in this class right here also well I think this is obvious you need to know how to read and more importantly understand process diagrams what is this what does this mean all these little guys right here and of course you have pretty lots of diagram notation but i think there are some issues standardifications or in germany a lot the dean deutsches institute for normalisierung which is essentially just the german institute for standardizations so instead of you using this symbol for a pump and me using this another guy maybe just this and another guy uses this one we choose to use maybe I don't know this one is cool so we choose this one as a standard now we want to also understand the legal stuff that is behind the creation of new processes new products the environmental impact we're going to have is it good are we going to destroy a forest or are we going to have a dump in the water are we going to throw to the ocean or are we going to burn too much fuel and have ple pretty much gases to the atmosphere well you gotta check it there and social responsibility if you know it's a product that will harm people or at least it's not that let's say they make you fat such as I'm not going to say anything but those sugar added sodas they kill people because there's plenty of sugar that's the social responsibility are you going and willing to do it well that depends on your ethics and of course money 
because not building a let's say a factory means that you are not going to employ people so that's also another social impact now we're going to do chemical plants not only just to build them but we want them to have the best designs or at least the better design than the actual one so when you do a new plant you want to always include the little fixes that you know for instance you know that this plant has this problem and well of course you need to fix it you can fix it for the new plant so if you don't fix it well that's a very bad for a chemical engineer you should always improve always go and reach for the top you want to increase yield you want to make safety processes not only safety process but every time less accidents and less accidents in order to achieve to the zero accident thre threshold now we want to have also high prof profitability and we're going to see that in the course of economics so this is funny because many times you have this uh, class at the same time with the plant economics which is well of course if you're going to have a very safe process with plenty much money well probably that process is not going to work or if I tell you that I can get a diamond but I need to have very huge pressures and temperatures that it's going to cost you I don't know three times the market value well why would you want to do a diamond plant if you're not going to be able to sell those at the price they are worth or also I don't know an example that you know that you probably let's say we're going to do this biofuel but we need to have pretty much a lot of clean material and the reality is that trash is not clean you need to separate it and currently there is no separation method that is economically speaking uh, doable so this plant will not work and that's what I wanted to show you guys in the next video we're going to integrate this little guy right here which is high profitability or high utilities in here <laughs>